Okay, let's dig in and find that rock, see if I can get it out in a timely manner. Oh, there it is. Ooh, that's a bad spot, right there. All right, that one's gonna be fun. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. Oh, oh, just about to go. Come on, girl. Fall down. That's the culprit. Okay, this feeder chain bar. I'm gonna rotate the chopper here, which will then let me turn the feeder chain, and I'll get that bar right here where I can work on it. So let's do that, nice and easy. This bin's got barley in it. <laughs> of course, that bin had a little barley left from last year in it. And we were gonna put barley on this year on top of what's left in there. So this is the bin I need to be on. It's just simple, you know, moving the auger's real simple. Real simple by yourself. Flying the drone, simple, you know, trying to record it all. There we go. This bin's ready for some peas. The sure track moisture probes are tied down to the floor. I think we're good to go. She's centered up there. Let's put the first load of peas in the bin. Let's go! As we get out of that obnoxious grinding sound of bees, which are so loud. Over here is all the aeration floor, the fan, and all the final components to finish this bin. So what happened? Um, when the materials were brought down for this bin, 
Unfortunately, a mistake was made and the wrong bin rings arrived. So they sent those off. So the right bin rings came, but in a mix up, we missed four rings that we were missing to finish out the bottom of this bin. So they had to makeshift the builders and splice together some old pieces that they had, some scrap pieces, just to button it up until the correct rings arrived so we could finish assembling the door and then finish the aeration floor, the fan, the unloading auger, the sweep, all that. So, will we have this bin ready for harvest? Maybe. I hope so. I don't know if we're going to need it. Hard to say we'll have enough crop to fit all four of these bins full. Uh, but we're going to work on it. They should come in the next couple days and we'll hopefully either wheel tackle it or we'll get a crew out here to finish the bin and get us on track to put weed in there. So that's what's going to happen. She's a bit dusty. Those feet are dusty. Wow. Just like that, we're done. Back to the field. Oh yeah. Got a lot more coming. Where this came from, it's going to be a good day. So we jumped into another field and uh, it's, it's yields dropped significantly from where it was. We're running about eight bushels an acre right now, 11 right there. This field's averaging right around 14. Uh, the peas are shorter, a little more sparse, and we've had to stop a lot to unplug rocks in the drapers, get rocks out of the rock meter trap. It's just been rock here, rock that, scoop of dirt here, scoop of dirt there, and that, it just, yeah, it's like harvesting lentils all over again, only they're not lentils. But the yield is still impressing us for what we've had for conditions. So if we can just grind through this, keep these combines in one piece, and then do a little work to them, get it ready for wheat, you know what? It's a good day. So I'm just hanging out. Dad's over in the other combine right there, and uh, leg arms is shuttling trucks back and forth for us. So we're uh, kicking, kicking some major pea butt. Also, for those that don't know, hopefully this gets to you in time, we are going to the Farm Progress Show in Boone, Iowa. So, if you're around there, you should come and say hi. We'll be at the Case IH booth. And also, our Big Bud 650 is heading to the show as well. And it will be at the Titan Tire booth. So, a lot happening. So that's the end of August, beginning of September. So we'll be uh, taking off heading that way and we'll still probably be harvesting. Uh, so we'll come back to combines when we get back from that. But just so you guys are aware. There's a lot going on, so if you're around that show, come by, say hi, and uh, I'd love to shake your hand. See you then. There we go, that's it for the night. Got some work to do the header in the morning. It's uh, dragging stuff all over the place, so we'll work on that in the morning. These bugs are all over the place. I'm going to bed, we'll catch you guys then. A little bit of morning wake up juice for the combines. Cheap stuff, bought last year, still burning on it. Won't be so cheap to fill it up again. But we're not burning nearly as much fuel with this uh, 15 bushel pea crop. I think the engine's running like 50% engine load the whole time. I've got a half tank of fuel and we started a day and a half ago. Usually we burn a tank a day. So it just goes to show if you're not using it, that's good. So a little bit of savings, kind of. Something to be positive about. Looks like my draper seized up. I'm pretty sure I know what goes on. There's a couple spots that just the perfect size rock likes to get in there and jam it up. And uh, it's a pretty simple fix, just a nice crowbar. Pop the rock out, get back in business. But every now and then, there's another reason why it's not turning. You can see how it's piled up on top there like that. You gotta catch it quick because the motor doesn't stop turning. It just keeps spinning inside that draper belt there and it'll start to smoke and burn it. And I don't want that. 
let's find this rock. First place I check is right here. And that is clear. No rock there. Second place is usually right here. That's clear too. Okay. Now I'm starting to wonder, where's this rock at? I see it. Way up in there. All right. Simple fix. I had a bunch of nice uh, really nylon skid plates in the bottom of this thing, but they were starting to bend and they were just dragging dirt, so I took them off. So we're just gonna run metal on the ground. The only bad thing about that is you might start fires with sparks, but I'd much rather just be welding metal to the bottom of those plates at this point than dealing with dragging because I'm on the ground, so I don't wanna be pushing dirt in front of this thing. It's getting hot out today. Huh. Not used to this weather. We've had pretty consistent 85, almost 90 for about two weeks. Now it's about 100, and I'm not enjoying it as much. But you know what? We'll make it happen. You just gotta keep working. That being said, these are coming in, well, not that many bushels. So it takes quite a long time to fill a truck. So I'm doing random things around the farm, fixing up stuff, working on things, tinkering things. And then when they call me, like, hey, the truck's full, take it to the bin and unload some peas. But we're getting some bushels, that's all that matters. Keyword, some. I think the last tally off this build is maybe 15 bushels an acre, maybe. We won't know until you actually get it in the bin, so. But there's still a few acres to cut, like 1,500 acres or so, give or take. We have a major problem. The Fummins is not feeling so good. It's possible I'll have to pull the motor, but I definitely have to pull the heads off. Yeah, not looking good for Fummins. So here's what happened. I was driving the Fummins with a flatbed hauling my 6,000 gallon cistern, which is a fiberglass, hardly any weight to it. Truck was running awesome. It wasn't, uh, wasn't pulling hard and I got to a hill and it started pulling a little bit harder, but not crazy going 65, almost 70 miles an hour. And all of a sudden I heard a clanking sound and I look over and the boost is at 45 PSI. So I let off and it just starts knocking and I'm like, Oh no, I just threw a rod. So I pull over quickly and I shut it off, crawl underneath, no oil, nothing on the ground. No holes in the block, everything looked good. I'm like, okay, that's kind of weird. So I started up again. Kept on knocking, really bad. So I started thinking about it, trying to figure out what is going on. And I thought, well, maybe there's an injector that is stuck open and it's just dumping fuel into that engine and it's knocking. So we pulled this thing back, it was about uh, 70 miles away, we pulled it back and I diagnosed that one of the cylinders wasn't really quite hitting very hard and it wasn't knocking quite as bad after it was cooled down. So I thought, well, let me just take the injectors out and put a set of injectors in it. It's probably due for injectors anyways. So I took all the injectors out, all the tips looked good, they weren't broken. 
put new injectors in it, it actually runs better than it ever did at idle, but it's still missing and still pinging and knocking and there's something wrong with it. And then if you pull your oil cap off, well, it's puffing it out. So either two things happen. Got a hole in the piston. Pistons weren't rated for what this motor can do. Uh, maybe the rings broke apart and it's got a lot of blow by in the piston. Or maybe there's a bent valve. Because I took off all the valve covers and everything's moving just fine. But it's possible that there's a bent valve. So saying that, this 12 valve Cummins, gonna have to get it looked at. And while the guys are out there working, they're harvesting, the trucks are taking forever to fill up, it's gonna be a couple hours before they need me, I might as well start looking at this thing and figuring out what is going on. And maybe, maybe we can fix it. If it's just a bed valve and nothing happened to the piston, I can send the head off someplace and they can put new seals in it, new valves and springs and make sure everything looks good get a head gasket, put it back on this thing, and this fun will be fine. Or we'll have to pull the motor and we might have to rebuild it. You guys wanna see what I'm talking about? Let's start it up. this thing didn't do before is that idle it never puffed out blue smoke and it's got kind of a combination of blue and white smoke and it's just you can just hear it miss it something is just not right with this motor it's a shame because the Thumbins is a sweet truck and we could really use it during harvest because uh, well there's enough guys that single cab is kind of cramped but let's bring it in and uh, I'll start dropping fluids on it and cracking it open. I really don't want to, but I can't get a scope in the injector holes because it's too small of holes and I don't have a scope small enough. So, gotta pull the heads. Unfortunately, my fear has come true. Those were some of the better peas we started in. This is what we're dealing with. It's basically lentils. For those who don't know lentils, lentils grow like this tall. Actually, good lentils can grow reasonably tall, but this is the average height of our pea plants, about five to six inches tall. There's two pods in that one. But believe it or not, there's still 10 bushels an acre in this. Well, at $8, that's $80 an acre. At $10, that's $100 an acre. Well, you've got to harvest it. Because that's that's still money. Pay back some of the money we put to grow this. But the header, as you can see here, that's about as close as I can get to the ground before I start digging dirt. 45 feet of header. This isn't a flex head. It's a rigid head, but it still does a good job at hugging the ground. Remember, I rolled this with that Mandaco 85 foot land roller. Well, it was so dry this spring, the ground was so hard that that roller still had a hard time pushing those rocks down into the ground. So what's happening is this header's getting, I shouldn't say the header's getting beat up. The cutter bar is getting absolutely thrashed. So it's just a constant start and stop, start and stop, changing now guards and sections. As I see, there's one right here that needs a little bit of rock treatment done to it. One second here. Oh, that's not gonna last. Anyways, with that said, we're grinding through it. It's low and slow. It's gonna feel so good though. I'll tell you one thing nice about starting with the low crop first is when you get into other crops, it just feels like heaven. You're like, oh, I don't have to worry about hitting rocks. It's amazing. So, there you go. Just picked up another rock. GM Peter House, but I think my reverser got it out. So, let's go see if there's a present waiting for us in the front of the, front of the header here. Everything jammed up for a second for sure, so. Um, oh, right here. Let's 
So Ready set us up with a pretty sweet deal for the case steer. Yeah, that little beast over there. This is what we're gonna do to it. We start talking to him a little bit and we're like, man, it really has a blind spot behind the skid steer and it'd be really nice to have a camera set up. So after talk to them, we're putting a camera system in it. Little backup camera. I'm actually excited about this because there is a, a major uh, blind spot and having a camera in there sure does seem necessary in my opinion, honestly. Because uh, it doesn't take long to damage something with uh, a little cute thing over there. So yeah, I'm thinking about mounting it right up here in the corner. It's kind of a good spot where it's not in your, your uh, view and you can look up in the corner and looks like somebody, somebody had something mounted up there before. So what I'll end up doing is I'll have to take this console off, figure out a power and a ground and a key switch, get that wired in and run wires back to the back of the case steer and then put the little camera, probably drill a hole, mount that thing in there and then we got a camera. So let's get busy. I would really like to mount it in the very center right here, but I can't. Um, I made a little bracket right here and you bolt it in the very center. So my OCD is gonna kick my butt right now because I really, really want it in the center. And I don't think I can put it in the center and I probably have to drill out off to the side. because so I need something that's kind of flat Maybe what I'll do is build a bracket that I can bolt onto here and have the camera mounted to it. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna think about it. It ain't pretty, but it's centered. That's all that matters, right? And the other thing is it's tilted this way a little bit, which is good, right? All right, let's take it off and paint it. Cause um, I don't think a rusty little camera holder thingy is gonna look nice. So let's paint it black. So I pulled the console apart right there and uh, found a power on and off. So a key switch power. Got that wired into the harness for that little monitor, put a little bracket on there. Now I got to tighten this all back up and then put the monitor on, run the wire to the camera, install the camera and we're done. It's all put in there. So let's try the sucker out. Okay. All right. Ooh. I've got 
got a backup camera. 